This is my 3D printed IDX case. And today I want to share it with you on how I made it. My goal here is to showcase with you my take on a simple yet custom ITX case in which I'll show you my design process, 3D scanning, 3D printing, prototyping, laser cutting and engraving, and finally the whole assembly process. Which means as well that I will show you an often overlooked part of the design and assembly, which of course includes failures as well. And if by any chance you're interested in the project files, I will more than gladly share them. Let's begin with an idea. And will it even work? To start with, my idea was to create a very compact ITX case that had a very home-like look. However, at the same time, I was searching for shapes and design ideas in which I found some in the GD11, which is a large HDPC case, but it featured a really nice front grille, pretty much like in modern soundbars. Same goes for the second one, which had that nice perforated front, but was too much gamified at the same time. Thirdly, the Liam, which was the closest at home with its very sleek look, and it had the flat elements I was looking for, it was still too close to a standard PC case. These flat elements I tried to incorporate in my case as well with magnets, but that just did not work. Even with my numerous attempts to make the magnets and the glue stick together, they just refused to adhere to the acrylic. And while I searched to find a solution to my design, most of the ITX cases were basically all the same, which meant I had to make one myself that will fit the design I was looking for. So like I mentioned before, the whole idea of this case was it to be simple. And the most important part of this case is it had to look really nice and I wanted to incorporate these glass elements of acrylic on all of the sides. And lastly, that front wooden panel, which was key in making it home-like. And my first impression was, well, this can't be that hard to build. But while doing this, I have stumbled a lot. There was a bunch of bad reference on scalability and size of ATX components and boards that when I built my first prototype, which looked quite good and up to spec of what I had in mind, was nowhere near dimensional accurate on not just the board, but a lot of other components that again, were yet to come. Which brings us to this lovely box of over six kilos of basically various test prints in order to ensure that it really fit all of the dimensions and the tolerances for the motherboard. For the printed parts, they are printed in carbon reinforced PLA, mostly because of their aesthetic look especially the in-between the layer lines and just the overall feel of the material itself. All of the parts as well are printed on my V-Core 4 IDEX, in which in some instances I use the copy or mirror mode just to get faster output and prototyping, which help a lot. But printing with this material meant a few fail prints as well. Now that this is all printed, we can finally start assembling. Here you can see all of the 3D printed parts we need, starting with the GPU bracket that goes on the back. Besides that, so we have the front, the back, the main motherboard panel, four frame assembly parts, and lastly, two legs. Now that we have listed all of our printed parts, we can start the assembly by adding all of our heated inserts into the frame brackets of our ITX case. Since the frame brackets are printed flat, I had to design a teardrop-like hole for our heated inserts. This is crucial for assembly, as it prevents misalignment while putting heated inserts on the sides, and especially while assembling the whole frame. After we've assembled the frame brackets, we can start putting our heated inserts onto the front panel, in which I use the longer ones so when I'm assembling the fans, it will basically snap in place. 
For the back and the motherboard panel, I am putting more heated inserts for all of the elements, like the GPU bracket, the acrylic glass, and the motherboard standoffs and the legs. And just adding a few back to the front panel for the acrylic glass assembly. While we're finishing that, let's take a quick look on our laser cutting of the top panel. Well, seems to be doing all right. Since the laser is doing fine, and we're done with the threaded inserts, I think it's time to start the pre-assembly of our fans to the front panel. As I mentioned before, I explicitly made the hidden inserts there, the longer ones, so they can snap onto the front assembly pretty nicely. And to place them, we basically need a few M3 screws. And while I'm screwing this, let's check the second set of plates that are being laser cut right now. Since that's looking pretty good, we can finally proceed to the actual assembly. Now that the inserts and the fans are in place. In this part, this is me just basically connecting all of the parts together, starting with the front that needs to be connected to the main motherboard holder so we can put the wood cover over it. The order is important because if we do the wood first, we have no access to the holders of the motherboard to be connected to the front part. And that's basically it. Everything from now on is simple assembly. You just connect all of the interlocking parts, which is the frame legs to the back and front, and you have the whole assembly basically done. For the type of screws, I use mostly M3 cap hat screws because they're widely available and have nice torque. But on some parts, I do use the torque screws, which is on the glass, since they're a bit more flat. And last but not least, for the pre-assembly, I am putting one millimeter in height hex brass standoffs. And that's basically it. For the frame assembly, it's done. Now that's left is the acrylic plates, but that's the last thing we'll add. So let's get to the components. What will be in our ITX case is a Ryzen 5 processor, a 500 gigabyte M2 NVM drive, an AMD RX 6400, a flex power supply, a B450 gaming motherboard, and finally a slim Yasbo cooler. With that out of the way, I went to my laser and saw that the plate didn't cut through, which means I need to cut another plate now, meaning we can go back to assembly in which you can see those nice little dots on the motherboard that remained. Those are basically 3D scanning points, which I scanned the motherboard with, and that helped me a lot during assembly. From this point onwards, we are basically assembling the motherboard, all of the components, and putting it in the actual case. Just a quick peek on how the laser is going. So next on the list, after the motherboard is now assembled, is assembling the Flex PSU, which is semi-modular. It basically is held by three screws on the back. After that, we're onto the GPU, which is a bit finicky, depending on if the bracket is a little bit bent, which in my case it was, but a little bending backwards and we were there and now on a very simple click and stop switch which is triggered only as a regular switch which i soldered basically two cables and then put in and crimped jsd connectors on the other end which actually acts like a normal pc button This is me, just a quick recap in Lightburn, setting up all of the holes for the acrylic glass and just putting it all to cut while we were assembling this, basically. After the cut was finished, I tried removing it, saw it was a bit stuck, which just meant I had to pry it a bit out of the edge. 
While the hammer took care of that, we can finally set the last pieces of our case together, which is the actual glass. And yes, it is accompanied by that sweet sound of removing a sticker. After that sweet sound, I've added four torque bolts and gave it a really nice clean just to see how it looks. The same story goes for the left and right panel. Removal with a hammer, of course, and then test fitting. And to truly wrap up the case, I've added the two missing legs and I've added really small felt pads just so it doesn't run on any surface. One thing I forgot was adding the cables for the front fans, which I remedied now and made sure to add zip ties to hold all of the cables really nice and snug. Now that the case officially assembled, I just took some IPA almost full alcohol combined with just a bit of water so it's not too acid-like and just clean the whole case. Now that the case is partly clean and assembled, I went back to my PC and assembled the cables and another HDMI port to test if it actually works. Best way to test even if it powers on is I remove the front cover and if the fan spin, it works. And it works. The last thing was to just check the task manager, which I've noticed the GPS missing, but that was only due to drivers. So a quick driver reinstall did the trick and we are basically up and running. And this is it. This is my take on a mostly 3D printed ITX case. If you're interested in the source files or anything like that, let me know, I will publish them all for free. This is just me broadcasting myself as YouTube intended. Well, thanks for watching.